Welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to the second night for the 2019 Yoga Studies Graduate Colloquium. Um, the first thing I wanted to do is read the quote that shows up on my chakra chime. It's a random quote, and right now it says, the best way out is always through, which I think for our presenters tonight is actually a pretty good quote. <laughs> <laughs> the one that I was hoping I was going to get to read was right before it was Wayne Gretzky. It said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Um, so if you don't have this, it happens a great app. Um, so I'll be using this to um, time your presentations, as you know, and I won't take too much time, but tonight we have Stephanie Serrano coming from the LBC. <laughs> Grigoreva, I knew I was going to mess up the last name. Daria Grigoreva, coming from afar. <laughs> Very afar, you can tell them. Um, we have Karen Mills coming from the South Bay, Manhattan Beach. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. And Ulihas Bella coming from the OC. Where are you? Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Okay, and um, so I'm not going to take any more time. I want to introduce the, spe the first speaker, Stephanie Serrano who is going to be telling us about effects of a one-unit yoga course on undergraduate students' mental health and emotional well-being. Stephanie, I'll let you take it away. Hello, good evening. Um, thank you all so, so much for, for being here. I'm extremely grateful. Ooh, I thought I was loud enough without the mic. Okay, <laughs> my family tells me that. Um, <laughs> so yes, I decided to research the effects of a one-unit yoga course on undergraduate students' mental health and emotional well-being. And when I speak with others about yoga, the general response is, I can't do that, I'm not flexible, and my body doesn't move in that way. <laughs> Yoga has become an activity for the strong, flexible, mobile body thanks to marketing and advertisements for yoga studios, apparel, accessories, and retreats. However, yoga is exceedingly more than a physical exercise and workout. It is a work into the physical, mental, and emotional bodies of an individual. I believe this misunderstanding can be the result of the mainstream yoga scene today which is full to the brim of instructors with the elementary 200-hour yoga teacher certifications whose teachings primarily focus on asana as a direct result of what Professor Miller would describe as the modern grafting of hatha yoga into Patanjali's eight-limbed system. Many yoga instructors today are lacking the depth of study and knowledge regarding where the practices came from, their original intention, and how the practices serve the mind. Generally speaking, many fail to connect the unit of mind, body, and soul to the rest of the world. And because of this, there is a vast majority of individuals who are not able to access quality yoga scholars, practitioners, and teachers. Right here at LMU, there is an undergraduate course that I know is taking the first step in correcting this misunderstanding. I wanted to see what the effects were on this course, of this course, on undergraduate students' mental health and emotional well-being. And we all know that college life can be a challenging time and is truly a place for young adults to prepare for life in the workforce and life as an adult in our society. By offering undergraduate students a course such as Introduction to Yoga that's offered here at LMU, students are given the opportunity to learn the tools that yoga can provide from a qualified yoga studies graduate so that they may practice how to handle challenging life situations in a healthy way. By having this course as a one unit section, students who enroll into the course have an obligation to study and practice what yoga completely is in an academic setting. On one hand, those who are generally interested in learning about yoga will have a greater understanding of what yoga completely is and how it can improve their mental health and emotional well-being. On the other hand, there are always a few students enrolled into this course who are taking the course because they need one more unit for, uh, to fulfill their graduation requirements, <laughs> and those students too will unexpectedly learn these important life skills. So why should other universities offer this course to their students? 
Generally speaking, college students have reported the lowest levels of mental health in the past 25 years based on a study done in 2017. One study showed that one in four young adults in this country have a diagnosable mental illness. So the college experience is extremely valuable because if the tools to manage stress are not learned during this time of development, then these mental stressors and imbalances will continue to carry themselves into the rest of that person's life. Unfortunately for many college communities, the idea of being under professional care for mental health is stigmatized. As a young undergraduate student who seeks to adjust to the new environment, or on the other hand, is preparing for the next step after graduation, there is a great chance of disconnect from what the student may be feeling or thinking in relation to what the reality is due to academic stressors, social pressure, and family influence. For those that do seek help, the resources currently available to the student body are lacking sustainability, support, and attention. For most college campuses, only a limited amount of psychological services is offered in one's tuition before the student is referred to an off-campus provider at a much higher cost. Another issue with the services that are provided now is that some students may be prescribed psychotropic medications that carry major side effects in addition to the high cost. These services lack the quality that is necessary to serve these students long term. What is worst is that these, these services are scarce among community colleges as opposed to universities. Research by Rand Corporation indicates that students at California community colleges are more likely to report academic impairment due to mental health problems, but are less likely to receive treatment for these problems than their counterparts at UC and CSU schools. If every higher education institution offered their students a one-unit course that gave them the tools to identify signs leading to mental imbalance and how to self-heal, then through the avenue of the course catalog, every student is given access to help. Not only does an offering like this reach more individual students, this course offering would negate the high cost of individual psychological treatments and services. And the reason why the solution should be taken into the classroom is because professors who are skilled in making an impact in their students' lives have been shown to inspire further personal growth, which leads to further professional growth. It is important to address this problem with urgency as mental health and emotional well-being in young adulthood can truly change the trajectory of one's life. If one's experience in university life is depressed with a feeling of serious anxiety, lack of confidence, and self-worth, then that student's life course can truly be derailed due to poor grades, lack of social and academic support, and the loss of opportunity to make the appropriate connections that are necessary for life after college. So what is the solution? First, it's safe to say that many envision stretching when the topic of yoga comes to mind. Um, some may mistakenly think that yoga is simply a physical activity such as karate, baseball, or running. It is these generalized stereotypes of what yoga is that discounts the benefits of what yoga can offer its practitioners. Intro to Yoga is a course that presents its students with a set of practical life skills that are especially applicable during university life. This one unit course is one hour in length and meets once a week for an entire semester. And within that hour, the students uh, review yogic philosophy, asana, which is designed to counter the posture taken while sitting in a chair at a desk for the majority of the day, pranayama, which are breathing exercises, and meditation. The students are assigned a weekly journal prompt based on the week's philosophy topic and a three-page research paper at the end of the semester. The course is taught by the Yoga Studies graduate students here at LMU under the supervision and guidance of the Yoga Studies faculty. Um, the course curriculum is grounded in Patanjali's eight limb system, the yoga therapy of Swami Kuvalyananda and Sri Yogendra, and lastly the yoga asana recently developed in the modern yoga era whose lineage begins with Krishnamacharya. 
Uh, the data was collected from the Intro to Yoga course taught from fall 2017 through fall 2018 via this voluntary and anonymous survey which included qualitative and quantitative questions. And then my methodology, um, I took, this is a little video of me scrolling through all of my raw data and there was a lot of data. Um, and so you can watch and see how much that is. Um, so I had 173 submitted surveys over these three semesters, um, which I transferred that raw data into this Excel sheet, and then I totaled them up at the end and organized the responses in a way to where I could analyze um, and make some generalizations based on those results. And the overall themes that appeared from the end of semester survey do support that the course improved mental students' mental health and emotional well-being. Students reported the reduction of stress in almost all submitted surveys. In addition to the management of stress, other mental benefits that were reported was an increase in students' focus, self-awareness, and self-care. What I found the most interesting are the answers to questions 7A and 7B. Did you implement pieces from the yoga practice into your life outside of the class and which parts? Out of the 173 surveys, there were 90 responses to this question, with the leading category being pranayama, with 81 out of those 90 students who took the pranayama exercises beyond the course and into their personal lives. Based on additional comments the students answer, in the students' answers, pranayama was used to reduce stress, was used before sleep, for anxiety, when they were studying, and before exams and presentations. The second most used category outside of the class was yoga philosophy with 77 out of the 90 students who applied the yogic philosophies into their lives. Students shared that the topics had made a positive impact in their lives, were applied to both academics and to their personal life, and helped with cultivating inner happiness, self-improvement, and stress reduction. The top four topics that were implemented outside of class were Ahimsa, Pratipaksha Bhavana, Santosha, and Tapas. Asana was the third most used category outside of the class with 43 out of those 90 students who practiced the physical poses outside of class time. One student shared that the asana was used during study breaks to alleviate stiffness from sitting, and another noted, I used child's pose when overwhelmed and stressed to become aware of myself and my breathing. Lastly, meditation was used by 30 out of the 90 students outside of class. Themes from questions 7A and 7B's answers point to signs of improved emotional well-being with factors of stress reduction, mindfulness, awareness, self-awareness, confidence, and self-care in regard to sleep and physical exercise. From the same question, a few students account for the reduction of anxiety, which supports this course's aid in mental health. Lastly, a theme of functional performance emerged in relation to staying focused and in relation to academics. Uh, the following four questions asked if the students enjoyed the Dharma talks, asana, pranayama, and meditation. Dharma talks were the yoga, yoga philosophy lectures. And similar to the practices that students exercised outside of class, pranayama and yoga philosophy were the categories that were enjoyed the most. Um, so we had pranayama at 127, dharma talks were 125, followed by meditation, which was very close, 124, and then asana at 116. Question 5C asked the students why they liked a particular pranayama exercise, and of the top two, which were ujjayi and alternative nostril breathing, themes that emerged were stress reduction, relaxation, and focus. Here are several quotes from students in response to this question. Pranayama changed my life this semester. I used these exercises to calm down and gain control of my thoughts helped with stress and anxiety of being a student, calmed me when anxious, simple and effective, pranayama helped ease anxiety, and these, helped, these calmed me and reduced stress more than the asana. 
Lastly, question 1B asks the students of their most enjoyed Dharma talks what aspects interested them. The most common answer was that the topics were relatable and in more specific answers they were relatable to college life. Other themes that emerged were self-reflection, self-improvement, self-care, self-awareness, life balance, and stress reduction. The results from my research support that this one credit yoga course does provide tools to better the mental health and emotional well-being of an undergraduate college student. Out of the four categories that compose this course, I found that pranayama was the most favored and enjoyed practice that the students experienced in class and then directly used on their own to exercise healthy ways to manage mental health and emotional well-being. The second most popular category from this course was yoga philosophy, which again was used by the students outside of the assigned coursework and reported many benefits that support healthy ways to process the challenging period of university life. Today, in Southern California, we are lucky to be living in a world that is saturated with yoga studios, but those are yoga asana studios. More recently, we've begun to see the emergence of the meditation studio in major cities like Los Angeles and New York. But as I have discovered, pranayama and yogic philosophy are the keys to unlock mental clarity, focus, better sleep, sleep self-awareness, self-improvement, and most importantly, the reduction of stress. Living a life in chronic stress can aid in the development for more serious conditions like anxiety and depression. Institutions of higher education must consider the mental health and emotional well-being of their students for this reason. And institutions of higher education must recognize that these yogic principles should be taught in a yoga course instructed by qualified graduates of yoga studies <laughs> who can offer their students valuable life skills in an academic setting which will hold them accountable and who can offer the students much more than what they will gain from one of the many yoga asana studios that we are gifted with. Before a, a college graduate uh, starts law school, before the semester starts, they have to take a legal writing class. So before you even start law school, you have to take one fundamental class that's going to be the linchpin for everything you do in law school. I'm thinking that this might be something you'd want to offer students <laughs> before they actually start the university uh, mm -hmm. process, um, yeah. something to wet their feet. Yeah. Right. Um, I do talk about this in my paper that I would suggest this course even in university's core curriculum. So when you enter university, there are um, specific courses that you have to take pillar classes that they call them at different schools. And I write about how I suggest that this should be one of them. So, yeah. This might not have to do with your direct research, but did you find other universities anywhere in the country with yoga programs that were more than asana? Yes, so I did find one university, it's called Lamar University in Beaumont, Texas, that does offer something similar to the Introduction to Yoga course that LMU teaches. Um, and I am not completely familiar with the, the courses taught at USC, but I know that they do have a lot of yoga courses offered for their undergraduates. So. Were you planning to introduce yoga into the medical schools? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Were you planning to introduce yoga into the medical schools? Medical schools. Medical schools. Medical schools. Mm -hmm. Can you introduce yoga into medical schools? I would love, I would love to do that. And um, I, I, I believe that there's something in the works where um, they're with the yoga therapy department here at LMU, um, or I'm excuse me um, through the IAYT program, trying to build the healthcare system with the medical uh, with the healthcare system. Um, there is a yoga studio that I did um, one of my research papers on last semester called Be the Change. It's in Tustin, um, down in Orange County, and they have one out of the three yoga therapy programs offered here in California, and she works directly with Hogue. New, uh, Hogue Hospital in Newport Beach, um, and they're also bringing yoga therapy into um, into different clinics in Orange County as well. Any 
Any other questions? So where do you see this going next? <laughs> um, well, Chris wanted me to share. That's why he's asking. Um, I, I, um, I had a meeting last week with the director of the Life Fit Center at Cal State Long Beach. It's one of the recreational centers on campus, and I'm going to be working with them on developing a 200-hour yoga certification for their students so that they can learn more about yoga, and if they're interested in teaching it, they can teach it on campus to other students.